Hey guys, this video was brought to you by Squarespace. Hey CN, I plateaued in my climbing. What can I do? Well, sorry, this is so bad. My first thought is like, well, you could finger bite a lot and not get a lot better for another couple of years, get a few injuries, and then you can work on your technique. No, I'm just joking. Okay, so I actually do work with a lot of climbers who have plateaued. And one thing I noticed that many of them have in common is that there's something in the fundamentals of their technique that's not like solid. And when the fundamentals are not strong, it's really hard to layer on the more advanced techniques and for them to stick. So that's what we're going to look at today is the real fundamentals, make it good, and then life is easy. What's your first fundamental? The first fundamental is climbing is made out of two repeating phases. Stable and move. Okay, so now I'm going to do this climb showing the very classic rhythm of stable move alternating. Right, so you can see that in between every movement, I paused for a moment to establish stability. And what that gives me is balance and also stable position to move off from. And that makes your movement consistent and it means that you're not fighting the swing all the time. Well, when you're swinging a lot, like say your hand is here and you're swinging, there's a lot of like force that's going through your hands and your feet all the time because you're constantly finding a swing. I kind of think of it like, like white noise. There's a lot of movement noise in your movement. So everything has to work harder. See, um, when I go climbing, mm -hmm. I can't trust my feet and I don't know why. Can you help me? Well, that brings us to principle number two, which is always pay attention to weight distribution. What do you mean by that? It means that you want to always be mindful of where your weight is. Is it in your hands? Is it in your feet? And how is it distributed? Because that's very much the language of climbing. Okay, so say I'm here, and there's this awful foothold here. So if I have, if I want to go for that move, I really want to make sure there's weight on all three points that's on the wall, right? But very often what happens when we're coming to a worse foothold is that we don't put weight on it. So when we don't put weight on it, then when I go, there's a really high chance that you're going to have a foot slip. <laughs> what I want to do is put weight onto it, and now, when I go, I know it's going to be secure. Hey guys, you know what else is a fundamental tip? Squarespace. You've got to use it if you're making your first moves on the internet. If you're trying to start a climbing wall, you're trying to sell climbing shoes online, you're trying to do anything that requires an online footprint, Squarespace is the place to go. Squarespace has design intelligence, which means they've combined all their years of experience with the all omnipotent AI into one giant computer website bot that can help you build the coolest looking website. When you're getting ready in 2024, you take your first step with Squarespace. Uh, CN, I've been training arms non-stop and I'm not getting any better at climbing. What's wrong with me? Okay, that suggests that there's something going on with your movement chain, which takes us to principle number three, which is movement should flow from bottom up. What I see a lot of climbers do when they're climbing is they start top down. So that means they start pulling, then they push with the legs and then they tension with their feet. What's wrong with that? It's super inefficient because every movement makes the second movement harder. What you want to do is start bottom up. When you place your feet well, it's easier to push from the legs. And when you push from the legs, it's easier to pull from the arms. But like why this. do I care about being efficient? Because it makes those climbs that you can do feel fluid. And it makes those really difficult moves. It makes you able to try hard and apply yourself and not to struggle.
Sam, I keep seeing all the cool people doing dinos online, but I keep missing mine. What's wrong with me? Hmm, I think I know what's going on. So one thing I notice a lot with climbers is they, that they think in 2D, but we live in a 3D world. <laughs> Technically 4D. Technically 4D. <laughs> okay, so say you're trying to do this big step up move. So many people always think like left and right, and then it doesn't work. Of course, they forgot about the third plane, which is out and in. So that's principle number four. Move in the correct 3D direction. Okay, so really this is about aim. The move face links one stable position to another. So to get the correct 3D line, we're thinking about what's the starting stable position and what's the finishing stable position and what is the line that connects the two. <laughs> I hurt here, now I'm supposed to keep my hips close to the wall at all times, mm. every moment of my life. Mm. Is that true or no? <laughs> that is actually a really common misconception. Okay, why? Why? Because if you keep your hips close to the wall all the time, this is what it looks like. Doing so much excess movement, it's so tiring. Well, I don't get why I'm not trying my hardest at all times while I'm climbing. Surely I want to be 100% all the time. Well, climbing is actually more a sport about precision, and that's why the holds are bad. It's what holds are bad. So, trying out max all the time is like putting a jet engine on a bike, it's just not needed. It's better to put in the right amount of energy for the right move, and that means you can. Do the other moves instead of burning up. Thanks, Yen. I really would love more tips like this so I can break my plateau. Where can I find out more? Check out my new book, Smooth. You can get it on Amazon. Links in the description. Check it out if you want to be a better climber. Thanks, Yen.